When we're talking about determining power in a weighted voting system, and we talk about coalitions and winning coalitions and losing coalitions, with the bonds off power, we make these coalitions in a way that the order that the players joined the coalitions didn't matter. Now, there's another way of thinking about power that's the shapley schubeck method, or the shapley schubeck power, where we think about the order that the players actually join the coalitions. And what we get when we do that is we make a list of what are called sequential coalitions. And these are ordered lists of players. Now, if we have n players, then the number of players that could be first to join the coalition is n. Then the second player to join can't be the same as the first, so it would be there would be n minus one options. And if we multiply those two together, then we get the number of ways that we can have two players in our coalition. And then the third player to join, well, there are n minus two options for that person, and so on until we get to the point where the last person to join, there's only one player left to fill that slot. So if we actually look at how many sequential coalitions there are, it's actually n times n minus one all the way down to multiplying by two and one. So it's n times every number less than n down to one. Now we write this as an n with an exclamation point behind it, and we say that it's n factorial, or the factorial of n. So if we want to know how many sequential coalitions there are, when there are, say, five players, we're going to multiply five times four times three times two times one. And we'll find our number of sequential coalitions. Now, a pivotal player for the shapley schubeck power is the player that makes the coalition a winning coalition by joining it. So since the list of players is ordered, when we read from left to right and we add up the weight for each of those players, then it's going to be a losing coalition for some amount of time. And then there's going to be this one magical player who joins the coalition and when we add that player's weight, then we're going to have a winning coalition. That player whose weight brings to the coalition the winning votes is called a pivotal player. Now, the shapley schubeck power is concerned with how often are players pivotal players. So we're going to count what's called a pivotal count for each player. We're going to count how many times each player is the pivotal player in a sequential coalition. How many times does that player make the coalition a winning coalition? And then, after we've got our pivot pivotal counts, we're going to find a shapley schubeck power index, which is just the ratio of each player's pivotal count to the total number of sequential coalitions, or n factorial. And finally, when we put all of those shapley schubeck power indexes together, we're going to have what's called the shapley schubeck power distribution. So let's take a look at an example of determining a shapley schubeck power distribution step by step. So when we want to compute a shapley schubeck power distribution, we have four steps to complete, and there's kind of a half step in there too. So the first step tells us that we need to make a list of the n factorial sequential coalitions with the n players. Now, I would add a step before that, that we need to find out what is n factorial. So we'll do this off to the side. So remember, n factorial equals n times n minus one times, and we keep on going, multiplying going down until we get to three times two times one, right? All the way down. So in my example, I can look and I can see how many players are there. Well, there are one, two, three players. So the factorial that I'm interested in is three factorial. So that means I'm going to multiply three times everything between three and one. So three times two times one. So 
I'm looking for six sequential coalitions with the three players involved. Now to distinguish a sequential coalition from the coalitions that we were using for the bonds off power, we use angled brackets like this to show that the players are in fact in an order that matters. So I can have player one join, then player two, then player three. I could also have player one join, and then player three, and finally player two. I could also have player two join first, followed by player one and player three. Or I could have player two join first, and then player three, followed by player one. I could have player three join first, followed by players one and two. And finally, I could have player three join first, followed by player two, and then finally player one. So I can check to make sure that I have the right number of sequential coalitions by making sure that it matches with n factorial. So I have six and there are six. Next, I need to determine the pivotal player in each. When I'm determining the pivotal player in each, it's a good idea to underline the player that is the pivotal player. Now, I rewrote them just so that we would have each of our steps done, but when you're doing this, you don't actually need to rewrite them. So let's take a look. Player one has weight three, and then player two has weight two. So three plus two is five, Five is greater than my quota, but three wasn't. So player two is the pivotal player in this sequential coalition. Now, if I look at my next one, I have player one first, which gives me three, which doesn't make the quota of four. Then I have player three adding one to my three that are in the coalition. So that's, a, that's four, and that is my quota. So player three is my pivotal player. Now if I start with player two, I'm starting with a weight of two in my coalition. When I add player one, I'm adding three, so I'll come up to five from two, and player one has made it a winning coalition. Now if I start with player two, with just two votes, and then I add player three with one more, that gives me three, which still doesn't make my quota of four. And when player one joins, it brings us up to six, meeting our quota, so player one is my pivotal player. Now starting with player three, I start with one. When I add player one in, I get up to four, which is my quota, and player one has made this a winning coalition. And now player three starting with one, adding player two gives me three, which still doesn't make the quota, and player one is my pivotal player. So then I'm going to find the pivotal counts for each of the players. Now, we denote these as SS1. SS stands for shapley schubick So if I look for shapley schubick for one, the number of times player one is a pivotal player, and I count up how many times player one is underlined in my step before, and I find that player one has been underlined four times. I do the same for player two, so I'm finding the number of times player two was the pivotal player, and so I'm looking for the number of times player two is underlined, which is one. And finally, for player three, I'm again looking how many times is player three underlined as the pivotal player, and that is also one. So now to compute the shapley schubeck power indexes for each of my players, we use the Greek letter sigma to denote the shapley schubeck power index for each player, and we use a subscript to denote which player it is. So the shapley schubeck power index of player one is going to equal the pivotal player count for 
player 1 divided by n factorial. So in this case, ss sub 1 was 4, and n factorial in this example we found was 6. Now, similarly for player 2, I have my pivotal player count divided by n factorial, and that's going to be 1 divided by 6. And finally, for player 3, I'm going to take the pivotal player count, or pivotal count, and divide it by n factorial, and I see that that is 1 divided by 6 as well. So now taking all of these together, I have my shapley schubeck power distribution. Now, similarly to how it was with Bonzoff power, it's common to keep these all with the same denominator, so it's easy to compare them. But when we get very large denominators, um, then sometimes we convert these to percentages just to make it a little bit easier to compare. But for right now, we can see with this example that player one is in fact much more powerful with this power index.